Hello everyone, this is Daniel Marchena with XDA Developers, and here today we're taking our first look at Android Pie running on the Samsung Galaxy S9. Let's take a look. So what we have here is a very early development build from Samsung of Android Pie on the Galaxy S9. Now you may have seen on our portal site the Galaxy S9 Plus build with the screenshots we had and you may notice some differences between the two pieces of software. It looks like this is a later piece of software in some builds, uh, but in other things it looks like there's actually a regression in the way the software works. So this is still very early on in Samsung's uh, working and modifying Samsung UI 10.0. But we believe this is the general direction that we're going to see Samsung moving in, for better or for worse. So for starters, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the lock screen. The lock screen has seen an overhaul. We've got these new uh, colored icons underneath the phone and camera swipe up. Uh, and then we've also got this newly designed, very reminiscent of Android Pie, but something that you'll see throughout the rest of the interface as well, these heavily rounded corners uh, for the lock screen uh, notifications. You can swipe on these and then it turns into the full screen view here with the notifications and you can act on them just like before. Now on the older builds, you used to be able to act on them on the right side of the screen. It looks like they're taking up the entire bottom like Android Pie does. You can swipe them away, you can half swipe them to get to your action uh, actions as well in your notifications just like normal. Tapping out of it will bring you back to your normal screen. Samsung still has not gotten away from having to swipe to open a notification. If you double tap it you'll see it says swipe to open and then it will go ahead and open our notification. So this brings us to the base UI of Samsung Experience 10.0. Now, like I mentioned before, there are some things that are going to be staying similar and some that are changing. The general layout of the home screen is very similar to what we've seen in the past. Now, this is an AT&T phone, so all of the AT&T bloatware gets pre-installed once we went ahead and flashed the software. You have Bixby off to the left here. That has a slightly new look and feel to it, but generally I'm not noticing a whole lot of differences. Now you will notice this top uh, probably third of the screen here with this big banner. This is the design language that Samsung is moving towards. We're going to see this throughout the UI. It's something some of you I think are going to like and some people are not going to like it because it definitely removes from that information denseness that a lot of us enjoy. So if we go ahead and open up the dialer first here, now this is, uh, I don't have all of my stuff synced to this phone, and I don't have a SIM card that works with AT&T since it's SIM lock, so I can't test a phone call. You can see screenshots of what the phone call UI looks like on the portal site that we'll link in the description. So over here we've got on the keypad, uh, the keypad starts up here, it's a brand new UI with a search bar on the top, uh, recents, contacts, and then of course your places over on the right hand side. This is following a lot of what Google was doing with their software with putting the navigation controls down here on the bottom instead of having the tabbed interface on top. Personally, I really like the way this UI looks. Again, another thing you're going to notice throughout the interface is this dark black theme. Again, this is throughout the interface. Samsung is really pushing towards this AMOLED theme. Whether or not you'll be able to change it or not, we're not 100% sure, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So if we go ahead and go back to the home screen here, the first main change that I think most people are going to notice is in the quick setting panel. So if we go ahead and pull that down, you'll notice that it's very reminiscent of Android Pie, and it also has these dark notifications. I haven't seen any inconsistencies as far as the few notifications I've received on this phone with dark texts on dark UI or vice versa. So it looks like Samsung is really working on this. Uh, dark notifications is something that you can actually theme on Oreo builds and it works fairly well. So I think Samsung might have worked out a lot of the kinks giving us finally dark notifications that work pretty much uniform across all applications. You have your top row here with the round uh, icons just like Android Pie has. Uh, you've got your date and everything up here. This is a little bit more information dense than what Android Pie uses. Uh, on Android Pie, if you don't have a notch, it, it it's, it looks very low because the way the uh, status bar icons sit, but this is information dense. So 
looking at the way this is set up, I don't think we're going to see a notched Samsung phone coming out. It just doesn't look like it's set up that way. But of course, the S10 could have a little bit of a different UI changing that. One of the major things that you're going to notice is once you swipe down, things drastically change. Now, this is something that when I look at it, it's very reminiscent of uh, Xiaomi or EMUI from Huawei where we've got this big time panel up on top here. Again, something you're going to see throughout the UI. And then these icons down below for the quick setting panel. Uh, and then, of course, you've got your brightness bar down on the bottom. You can toggle just like normal, uh, turn on and off your settings here. If you tap the text, you know, you've got a little bit more information that you can do there. And, of course, you can change your order, add buttons, everything that you used to. We're not going to go through too much of that. It really hasn't changed. Uh, but that whole interface has changed. Personally, I'm a fan of this. I like the way that this looks. But again, if you like information density, this Android Pie is definitely not going to be the uh, version of the OS you'll enjoy the most. Uh, so next, we're going to go on into the messages. Again, I don't have a SIM card, so this is just a test text to my wife that didn't go through. Um, uh, now, I have this light UI here with the dark. Earlier, when I was messing around with the phone, this was a dark, uh, just like these notifications here. Uh, this was the same color. Um, I rebooted it. We were playing with some ADB settings, and it went to a light UI. So it looks like it is something Samsung is going to be changing with that auto dark mode that we'll be looking at in the display settings, and that is what is going to be changing. How many, how much apps are going to change, we really don't know because the feature isn't fully baked and isn't fully working yet. If you go into the messages here, you see uh, this would normally be like a bluish green color. It's just a standard, uh, you know, messaging UI. I didn't see anything in the settings that would allow me to change it to a light colored UI. Uh, but again, you know, this is still a very early build. You can also notice this rounded look down here. Um, I think this might be a design language Samsung is going towards with the new phones. It is very similarly shaped to the curve down at the bottom of the S9, so the S10 might have that same kind of a curve. I'm not a huge fan of that. Maybe if the nav bar was black, it would be a little bit better. So that's the major change there. Uh, Samsung Internet also got an update. Uh, we have this up on the uh, XJ portal that you can go ahead and download. It's got rounded textures and just revamped all around. Samsung really did that. They went ahead and revamped most of their software. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, the camera UI is changed quite a bit. Um, so I have it sitting down here so you can't see anything, but the camera's working on this build fine. Um, you still have your swipe down to switch to the selfie camera and then back to the back camera. Both of them are working on the S9. The S9 Plus does not have the front camera working and the AR emoji doesn't work at all. Uh, on the S9 build though, both of those features are functioning. So it looks like it's just a newer build. So the way to change your camera settings now, you can no longer swipe left to right. You'll actually see that activates uh, touch to focus and touch to exposure with adjustments here. Uh, that's actually gonna be right here. So you just kinda switch through them in order to go through your settings. Now, if you have a, I see the camera crash. It does that sometimes when I go into select a focus. Um, the old camera UI actually had that up here, and now it's here at your thumb. I think it's a generally a good change. I still wish you could swipe between them up and down on the screen in order to go between the settings, um, but it doesn't look like that's something they're going to do. That was one of my favorite features, but you know, the things change. Uh, one thing that people will love, I know myself and a couple of others noticed that if you touch the shutter button and you moved it, it was actually zoom and they've removed that in this build. So that's a very good thing. If you tap the little up button here, you've got a couple of more controls for like beauty mode, full feature mode or full screen mode, your settings, your flash. If you go down into the pro mode, that is where your adjustments for your exposure. Everything is very similar to the way that it used to be, just some tweaks and changes to where it's located. If you go into settings, you see this new settings UI. We're going to go into this a little bit more when we get into the settings menu. Uh, I think this is the way Samsung is going to be going. I don't think this is a dark mode glitch. I initially thought so when I was looking at it on the other phone, but seeing it here on my own phone, it definitely looks like what Samsung's doing. It needs to be cleaned up though. There is one thing to note, this phone, I do have it running a more condensed uh, DPI. I'm actually running 480 smallest width in the settings menu. It's the way I run all my phones. I just don't like huge UI. Uh, I like this much smaller look. So that's why it looks a little bit different than we have in our screenshots. But everything in here pretty much is similar to what was in the, uh, the Galaxy S8 and the Note 9 right now. 
So we're going to go ahead and go into the settings menu here. And again, like I said, this is one of the most drastic changes. Here's that top bar again, that top border again. Um, honestly, this reminds me a lot of Windows Phone 7. Um, it just has that feel of these large UI pieces. Being that Samsung has these in almost every single application except for the dialer, I think this is going to be a mainstay. It does look kind of weird with it just being black and, and settings being there. I hope maybe there's some color or some options for colors through the theme engine. Maybe we'll see something like that coming out in the future. Otherwise, the setting menu looks similar to Pi, but we've got these divided bubbles. I think this is one of the most controversial things about this UI are these divided bubbles. I feel that if this was one continuous bubble, it would look a lot better, it would flow easier, and would just generally be a nicer UI. I'm, I'm hoping Samsung changes that, but who knows what Samsung's got up their sleeve. Otherwise, going through the settings, I really didn't notice a whole lot of changes here. Now, there is a lot of condensing that they did here. I think there are settings that are removed. I'd really have to comprehensively go between my Note 9 and this phone to see exactly what's been removed or changed, but things have been moved down into other menus, making them slightly more condensed. So here we've got the display settings. Pretty much everything is exactly the way that you're familiar with. Um, you do have this new night theme. Uh, now, if you saw our screenshots, this didn't exist up here in the screenshots. This looks like it was something new in my build. This still does not function. Um, so it's we don't know what exactly it's going to do. I think it's going to toggle that dark mode like I showed you or told you about in the messages. I'll have a screenshot up in the article in the portal of what it looked like when it was dark. I think that's what it's going to toggle through, but again, we really can't say for sure. One thing I'm fairly confident about, this night mode toggle does not change this UI here. Um, we could hope, but I really don't think it's going to end up changing that UI. And I don't think these white blobs are going to turn into darker either. I mean, they could go to a darker mode, but I don't think they're going to go all the way black. So if we go down here, we'll notice the other changes are in the navigation bar. We have these uh, navigation gestures. This is very similar to what we have on Oxygen OS with the OnePlus 6. These are excellent gestures. I wish they worked in this build, but they don't. Uh, hopefully future builds will have them working, but basically it's swipe up for home, swipe up here for recents, and swipe up here for back, which is the way that it should be. It doesn't show us if there's any way to access the Google Assistant. Um, I believe they're just gonna push you to using Bixby on the button on the side, but who knows, they might end up putting something in there. We can actually see how it looks. If I go ahead and remove that, you can see the gesture hints down at the bottom. If I toggle that real quick, you can see these little gray bars that appear at the bottom, and that's where it's going to be. And you can turn that off if, once you get used to it. Uh, and again, you can switch the layout, uh, and that'll switch the layout in the uh, gesture controls as well. It's going to be a really great navigation UI. I'm happy that Samsung's including something like that. Uh, but the one thing that is missing is swipe up from home with the home keys like the Pixel has uh, in order to show the recents menu. So going down through here, we didn't notice a whole lot of change. Uh, there is one thing of note, because my DPI has changed, it does mess up the screen here. But something that I think a lot of you are going to be disappointed in, and I hope and pray Samsung changes this, this is all we get for power uh, and battery. Uh, there is no detailed drilled down battery usage. There is no full control and, and seeing what's going on, what's taking our battery. We basically just have this camera all 17 minutes. It doesn't give us a whole lot of information. Uh, even tapping it still does not give us a whole lot of information. I don't see anywhere for screen on time and there's nowhere else to really drill down into these settings. If we go into settings here, we just see apps using power, th those kind of things. I really hope this changes, and this could be a carrier thing as well. I've never used a carrier branded uh, Samsung phone, so if on your Samsung this is the way that it looks on your Note 9 or S9 or S8, then great, we'll probably see the better UI on other phones. Um, but this is kind of worrying. Uh, you know, where Google and Apple even now are showing you a lot more detailed things about what's going on with your phone, what's using your battery, and, and what's uh, causing it to drain, Samsung is going in the opposite direction. So I hope that's a, an early beta thing, and I hope that's something that ends up getting fixed. Otherwise, through here, there's not a whole lot of changes. If you use the Note 9, the, the interface looks very similar to the way the, the Note 9 looks. There is a new option here under Notifications, View Styles. Um, there's Typographic. 
it doesn't do anything right now. Um, you can see the outline changes behind it when you have that set, but it doesn't actually display it. So it's something we'll have to wait for a future build to go ahead and bring out. Otherwise, I haven't noticed any other real big changes uh, in you know the settings menus. And you'll notice again, there's that top third. When you open it, it's, it's nice and small, but the second you scroll up, you've got this big banner telling you where you are. Um, lock screen, I haven't noticed really any changes in the lock screen as well. Always on display seems similar. There is a, a largely decreased amount of uh, clocks and things that you can have on your lock screen. Again, hopefully this is just early build stuff and we'll, we'll see it coming. Um, it looks like actually there's a few more here. When I opened this earlier, there was only uh, two that I could select from. Um, so maybe this is something that's updated in the background uh, with Galaxy apps. Um, otherwise, going through it, everything else, like I mentioned, is, is fairly the same as what you've seen before. Um, you know, in our screenshots, uh, some of the changes that Android Pie brings, this is the new settings, you know, UI. Again, this is basically what we have on the Note 9 and the S9, but with just a cutout curve here. Um, so that's been pretty much our first look at the new Android Pie on the Samsung Galaxy S9. Uh, I did go ahead and install Digital Wellbeing, actually. And uh, it does function uh, once you allow it permission, proper permissions. So you can see in here, you know, what's taking up your screen time, you know, what's uh, been opened, how many notifications you get, all of that kind of fun stuff. You can see through here once you give it the proper permissions. Uh, and the other thing I forgot to go into actually was the recent menu. Uh, the recent menu is similar to Android Pie. You've actually got a search bar up here. It's really dark. I'm not sure if it shows up on the camera properly. Uh, and then you have your recently used applications down here. Again, just like Android. Pi. If you swipe up, you go to the app drawer and you can swipe up again to go out of the app drawer. I haven't tried this with another launcher to see how this functions. Um, it's actually something we can test here on the video. Uh, but you have a close all function here. And then if you tap the icon up here, you have a few different options for open and pop up view, split screen, app info, all of that good stuff. So let's go ahead and check and see what actually happens when we switch the launcher because I do have Nova launcher installed on the phone. Uh, so let's go switch this around here. We go to Nova and go back home. So let's go into Recents here and swipe up. So it looks like once you've got a new launcher set, um, these icons down here don't change. I don't know if there's any way to switch around when I long press them, they just vibrate. So it might be something that oh, looks like I crashed it. Um, it might be something that'll come in a future update that will allow us to go ahead and make some changes uh, to the way that that looks. Again, you know, we, we really don't know until Samsung rolls this out for good. So again, that's been your first look at uh, Android Pie on the Galaxy S9. Uh, be on the lookout for the portal for new updated builds when they come out. And uh, we'll also have m more videos on them if there are significant changes. Again, I was Daniel Marchana with XDA Developers.